going on, Cup Bangers? Today is April the 26th, 2016. I'm Alejandro, people, and let's talk about cars, yo. Hit it, Pedro. Ah! It's a very important thing for you guys to know that we will be giving away penis points right now. <laughs> So penis point alert guys, make sure to watch the whole video uh, because we're gonna drop two codes for penis points. One's gonna get you a hat right away, or at least it's gonna give you enough points if you wanna redeem them for the hat right away. And that those are only gonna be three, and the rest will give you a nice amount, a surprise amount of penis points. So uh, stay tuned, don't fast forward, and check it out, good luck. So in today's episode of Let's Talk About Cars, yo, I wanted to ask the big question, will the Dodge Viper ACR appraise which means go up in value, will it go down, or what the hell will happen to the value of it. But most importantly, what I wanna do, because everyone keeps asking me to do a video on this, is show you guys what exactly are the things you wanna look for in order for your car or whatever purchase you make not to take a shit in the market. So here we go, people. Now, before we get started, let's make sure that you understand one thing. I'm mostly talking about the, the rules in the United States. It's completely different from everywhere in the world. Uh, why? Because it's a closed market. EPA makes it really, really hard for cars to get in here that we're not supposed to or we're not meant to be here. So uh, it's a very segregated market. It's very independent from the rest of the world. Things are very expensive here for the most part, more than anywhere in the world. So we're talking about this one. Also, always, depending on the economic times, this is gonna be different. So always be sure to look ahead, see what's going on. If you're seeing a spike in the economy, everything is going up, chances are things are gonna go well. If there's something coming a little slight down, uh, things are gonna change. So just giving you a few notes, hopefully this will work, and then at the end I'll explain you why I think the Dodge Viper will actually go up in value. So. Here we go, people. So without further ado, let's get this shit started. Oh yeah, you guys notice my sweet muscles, huh? I've been working out for a day. Mm -hmm. It's been going pretty well. <laughs> Not at all. All right, so point number one, know your history. What do I mean by history? Uh, should I read a book, Alejandro? No. That's a very smart question you asked there, uh, uh, Johnny. But no, you should not read a book. What you wanna do is always pay attention to things that happened already. I'm gonna give you a very good example. So when I was younger, the Enzo came out and it was $660,000 around the sticker. And I remember I was living in New York and the first couple of them that got delivered were landing and they were going immediately for sale at $1.25 million. That to me was the first time I remember saying, holy shit. How, how is it that a car is going up in value like that? And then I did a little bit more digging and I found out that actually a lot of people invested in cars. So that's the thing. So why history? You wanna go back and look at things that happened before. Chances are history will repeat itself. So the Enzo came out, double the price the moment it landed. With the LaFerrari, if you would've given me the money and said, Alejandro, you wanna buy a LaFerrari right now? And I was able to because I had the money, just Ferrari didn't, uh, you know. Uh, we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> I'm over it. <laughs> so many feelings. And so if Ferrari would have told me, Alejandro, do you want to love Ferrari? I, I, I would have said absolutely because my guess that car was gonna be worth, if the sticker was one and a half, at least $3 million the moment they landed. I was a little off. The moment they landed here in the US, they were trading for 2.8, which still $1.3 million more is uh, pretty damn good. So know your history, very important, history repeats itself. That's one. Number two, very simple guys, limited editions. Within big stable brands, things that have proven themselves before, go and buy them, that's it. I mean, you, you buy anything limited edition that's uh, coming out, chances are you're gonna do great. I'm looking at, and, and my example right now would be the 911R. Why is the 911R gonna do better than the GT3 RS? Aside from multiple things, but let's just say right now, because there's a number of cars. Why is the 4.0 gonna do better than the 911R in the long run? Very simple, limited amount of numbers. And that, that amount is lower than the one in the 911R. It makes the car more uh, of an item that people want. Bam, very nice and simple. Know your limited editions. Make sure you do know that. Numero tres, kids, look online, research the market. What I do every day, and it, don't get me wrong, I didn't start this as a business, right? And it's not a business for me at all. I just get to switch around cars a lot without losing money for the most part. And if I lose anything, it's gonna be very small. <laughs> I didn't miss out on that one. That's what she said. 
That's what she said, yo. Uh, <laughs> so if I lose anything, it's going to be very tiny. Let me give you the example here. For the longest time ever, I, I was browsing on eBay Motors. Why? Because, you know, I like to window shop. I like to see what's available, what's around, what prices are, uh, how are they changing, if anything is going up in or down in value. So you want to see what the trades are and see what people are doing. If you see cars that are not selling, not selling, not selling, and you're looking at those prices, you know that those prices are inflated. So that's not going to be the right price. So always look around, make sure that you know markets. This is not going to take you, by the way, a year, two years. It's going to take you a while of you studying something, study, study, study without studying because it's fun to look at cars and see how much they sell for. So make sure you know your markets. Next point, brand favorites. What does that mean? So here we go. This is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated, but if you love one car brand, you probably know this. There's a lot of people, and I'm gonna give you the easiest example right now, Porsche. How many of those people that were growing up back in the day uh, were looking up to the air-cooled Porsches? right? Well, now guess what? They're cheap and people can buy them. So because that's a big uh, favorite within the brand, people will buy them and will be sought after in the future. So if you can buy anything like that, and that I mean air-cooled Porsches, manual Porsches, and naturally aspirated Porsches, they're all starting to stack up, right? So all that stuff people love within a brand, it's easy to know. If they're making the last one of that, guess what? You're going to do pretty damn well. Which brings me to my next point, which is the last one of something. Well, Alejandro, what do you mean by the last one of something? Like The Last Airbender, that was a terrible movie by M. Night Shyamalan. Should I buy that? No, you should not. No. No. Do not go out there and buy that movie. It's terrible. I'm talking about the last of something. Uh, <laughs> this is so stupid, by the way. I'm talking about the last of something that people want. So right now, the big thing uh, are two things, really. Manual and naturally aspirated engines. People are going mental over those things. If you have an iconic car that's a manual, you know, GT3 RS 4.0, uh, or a naturally aspirated one, the GT3 RS right now, or the 911R, which is a perfect combination of those two, man, you're fucking locking out, son. You're gonna do really, really well whenever you're able to get those. Again, it's all about knowing what's coming ahead. And also, take, take chances, dude, take chances. Nothing in here is guaranteed. Any day now, Porsche can turn around and say, fuck you, but let's face it. These brands want your cars to go up in value because it looks good for them. That means for the future, people will buy these cars brand new, brand new, even pay a little bit more to get them because they know that the cars are going up in value. It's like a smart investment, and that's the way they look at it. So Porsche's not gonna turn around and you know what? Next generation is going to say, you know what, guys, we did great with the GT3 RS, but fuck everyone. We're going to do another one. And it's going to be a manual. It's going to be a 4.5 liter engine. And they're not going to do that because they would be shooting themselves in the on the foot. Porsche, if you're planning on doing that, uh, I'm sorry I'm saying this. <laughs> oh, those downshifts, son. Got the shit under control? Not really. Next point, unicorns. Unicorns, dude, if you can get any of those cars that people have always admired, you're gonna kill it. McLaren F1s, I mean, I know the average buyer that's gonna buy a McLaren F1 is not looking at this video and saying, oh, is that how it's done, Alejandro? But that's what you want. You want anything that's a unicorn. That's why the 6x6 made so much sense when it came out for people to buy. And that's the first time I'll tell you, go buy a Mercedes truck, it'll appreciate. Why? Because that's a unicorn. That's so badass. It doesn't have to make sense. It's one of those things that everyone wants, limited amounts, and you just know what a unicorn is. You just have to know. I cannot explain that to you. Uh, if you don't know what a unicorn is, I believe we're fucked. Thank you, sir. All right, here we go. Ah, very empty street. I almost got it to 40 miles an hour, which is pretty good. Another big thing to look at uh, or look into if you're buying one of these cars is the cost of maintenance. And the simple reason why is because if you're buying something that scares people because they're gonna have to write big checks a lot of the time, that is gonna affect the value. I'm gonna give you a very good example. The Bugatti Veyron, what an insane machine. I mean, until today, that thing fucking pulls like nothing. It's comfortable, reliable, great. I can afford to buy a Bugatti Veyron. I cannot afford to own one. 
Does that make sense? So a lot of people did that. A lot of people shied away from those. If you want to get an 06 Veyron, you can probably get one in the 600s today. And that's simply due to the fact that people are terrified of the car, I, of, the, uh, of the car maintenance expense. And that's simply due because people are terrified of the bill when it comes to fixing the car for anything. So always make sure that you're buying stuff that is not that crazy to repair. Pagani did a hell of a job with their car. If you service that Wyra, you're paying $1,300 for your first year service. That's nothing, nothing. We already went with the Bugatti one. It's 30 grand first year. Just the service. Forget about the oil change. If you drive the car, the tires, insanity. So make sure you buy those so that others don't get scared. The Carrera GT is another one, another one of those cars that has that problem with that clutch. $20,000 average if you want to replace it, if you constantly drive it. So you don't want to be the one stuck with the bill here for that. So those are basically the points. Now, let me, let me go back and give you the example with the ACR. What do I think the ACR is going to do? I think the ACR is a very underappreciated car, and I'm going to tell you why. It's not going everywhere in the world. Uh, for some reason, in the Middle East, they're not bringing these cars, and if you want to bring one of these, it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass for you to bring them over. Everything is doable in this world, people. Where there's a will, there's a way, but it's hard for it. So not a lot of people are looking at this car saying, oh, that's a must, because not every single bowler in the world has one. Now, let me tell you why I think this car is going to do well in the long run and why it's underappreciated. Number one, manual. That shit's disappearing. We already went through that. Choom. Uh, number two, a naturally aspirated engine. That's a big one, so here we go. Number three, this is the last production Viper to ever be made. Last one, so boop, we hit another check mark. Check mark. Limited edition numbers. Now, while these cars are not limited edition because they're not numbered, no one realizes that these cars are actually gonna be built in an amount probably around the 300 mark of units. 300 units. Let me just give you an example of something like this. So the 4 GT, I know it's completely different because the other one's a, a heritage thing and it was an homage for the other one. But the Viper has been an iconic car for a very long time. It was one of my dream cars to own when I was a kid. It's now, knock on wood, a reality and I'm, I couldn't be happier about it. So. I know that people my age and maybe a little older are already fantasizing about Vipers. So from there, where do we go? From there, you have to realize that Ford made 4,600 examples of the Ford GT. It's a manual supercharged car. This one's naturally aspirated, manual, last of a kind, less than 300 units. I just don't think people have realized the amount of car you're getting for the money here. Another thing I like about it so much is it actually drives better than the GTS, the other Viper, the one like the one Dean has that we made pink for the show. Uh, so if you put all those elements together, this is my best shot at keeping something simple and safe as far as car investment goes, right? Obviously, this is not gonna praise right away and all that stuff. As, as soon as the other cars start disappearing, that's when these cars are gonna go up. So. This is more of a very long-term hold for someone that wants to make money in a car like this. But in the meantime, I'm pretty sure you can drive this and not lose money, if anything, or just very, very small amount. So if that's the case, fuck, man. I think we got a winner here. I love this fucking thing. Love you, fuckers. Let me know what you think. What do you think uh, uh, I missed there? And what are things that you think I missed out on the video that you're looking for? Do you think this Viper is going to go up in value? Do you not? Leave it down in the comments down below. I'm dying to hear your opinions. I want to know what you guys think, where your head's at, see how stupid I am or how uh, little on the right track I am. So please, let me know, fellas. I missed you again. Uh, have a good one. Take it easy.